and our relevant tech documents 3341. Yeah. I have a few audio examples here as a short break after the first block, so to speak, and that show the effect of loudness normalization, so before and after peak normalization, loudness normalization. So the first one is everything aligned to minus 9 dBFS sample peak. Heeft u daar wel eens bij stilgestaan? Nee? Wij wel. De Amersfoortse, de inkomensverzekeraar van Ondernemend Nederland. Ik had mijn zelt als nog alle schliefen verlassen. Niet ver van lager vond ik, wonach we zochten. Die oase. Ja, yeah, those were examples from our EBU database we used for the gating. So you see levels all over the place, especially the commercial much too loud because it's aligned to peaks. So now the same sequence aligned to loudness level of minus 23 with the gate. Tweak that a little bit. I was wondering oh, if it was his look where he's ended up on the down slope. Oh. He's got to just flip it across there oh. and, and, and grow some brakes. Heeft u daar wel eens bij stilgestaan? Nee, wij wel. De Amersfoortse, de inkomensverzekeraar van Ondernemend Nederland. Ik had mijn zelt als nog alle schliefen verlassen. Niet ver van lager vond ik, wonach we zochten. Die oase. Oké, okay, so you now you recognize how much the commercial is punished. Now it's brought down and everything that remains is the bad audio quality because of overcompression. The advantage of loudness is gone. Everything that remains is the bad audio quality. So that is something that I think is one of the most fundamental effects of that. You're really almost forced to look at new ways to make your program interesting. Use dynamics, use less compression. And that's the good news also for the advertisement companies because I know you will have the question, well, the advertisement companies, they rely on that they are really loud and at least as loud as all the other spots. But now, for the first time, it is fully guaranteed by design that your spot cannot be louder or lower than your competitor. So you can get rid of the fear as an advertisement company that you are too low because we will measure your loudness and if you're too loud, we will bring you down. If you're too soft, we will bring you up. So now you can think about different ways how to attract the attention. More dynamics, yeah? not compression anymore. This advantage is gone. But that's the good news for the advertisement companies. By design, the competitor cannot be louder than your spot. Yeah? So that's, that's the good news. Let's come to loudness range, abbreviated LRA. Loudness range is also a very vital parameter I already introduced to you that we can use to decide whether we need to do some dynamic range compression. It's based on a statistical loudness distribution, so on statistical measures, 
The extremes are excluded. Why that? For instance, that a single gunshot cannot bias your measurement. You have a very low level movie and you have one gunshot in the whole movie and you would have to ensure that this one gunshot does not give you a wrong number for loudness range. This algorithm has been provided by TC Electronic to P Loud. And here's, for instance, a movie you all know, you have all seen. That's the statistical loudness distribution of the matrix. Yeah? So that's not a frequency response graph. It's here is statistical density. So the higher it is, the more levels at that value appear in the movie. So between minus 30 and minus 40, there is probably most of the dialogue in this movie. Yeah? So it's quite a low-level movie, actually, as far as dialogue is concerned. Here, then, is you know, probably more of the action type of scenes in this area. So now we get rid of the low 10% and of the high 5%. That's the algorithm. And the rest is computed into a number. And in that case, it's 25 loudness units. So loudness range is expressed in loudness units. And now you can say, well, OK, 25 LU is probably too much for the living room. And matrix in its original form is definitely too dynamic for the average living room. There are ways around that. You could, you know, there are uh, strategies how you could deal with that. You can, of course, then reduce the dynamic range. You also could use metadata and these kind of solutions. There are ways around it. But now you have actually a parameter where you can decide what you want to do. Yeah? You don't have to guess anymore. So we also encourage to use this parameter. We do not give a maximum number for loudness range because it is dependent on the genre, whether it's classical music or whether it's a talk show. We'll have different requirements for loudness range. And it's also dependent on your distribution platform. It will be different for probably podcasts than for your satellite feed. Yeah? So you can also tailor your loudness range depending on the distribution platform. So we say use loudness range, please, but we do not specify a maximum. And also that is going into 1770 as an annex. So also loudness range. You see there is a lot of cross-pollination going on between ITU and EBU and many members are in both groups also, so it's basically the same people also. In ORF, just to give you an example, in Austrian television, we use a maximum loudness range of 20 LU for classical music and films. That's the maximum. So since about, let's say, one year, we normalize every feature film to minus 23 and loudness range below 20 LU. We do that since a year, and that is highly successful, I have to say. If you talk about loudness range of today's programs, just think about that, that usually the dynamic range we use today in a digital world with this capability is less than the wax cylinder of Edison. The wax cylinder of Edison had more dynamic range than today's television programs on average. And I think that's a shame. That's a real shame. So we should come back to more dynamics. As far as the maximum true peak level is concerned, we de do define a number in R128. Yeah. You could say now that we can really measure the true peaks, we could go up to zero. But there is still a certain error possibility on the top, so we actually define minus one dB true peak as the maximum allowed true peak level for PCM in production. If you think about then distributing your signal with a bitrate codec, for instance, AC3, Dolby Digital. Then we have another document, the distribution guidelines, where you find information what your true peak level, your maximum true peak level should be for that. Because a bitrate codec needs a little bit more headroom not to introduce additional distortion. So I know, for instance, for high efficiency AAC, Dolby Digital, we recommend minus three dB true peak as the maximum true peak level. Minus one for generic PCM production. Other values look in the distribution guidelines that are going to be published very soon. So coming to metering, we have something called EBU mode, which defines a framework of parameters that should characterize a loudness meter, where, which is appropriate for 
you know, measuring loudness according to R128. 